slide, David? There we go. We got there you it. go. Thank you. Thank you, Christy, so much, and thank you for inviting me. And I mentioned, too, that I wanted to make sure if you could have these things handy. I do a very interactive talk. It's about a 20 to 25 minute talk. I talk pretty fast. I'd also like you to make sure you have a piece of paper, a pen, and your cell phone handy. And for the first thing I want to talk about, I want you to have your index finger handy. And what I'd like to do is just by raising your index finger, I would like to ask how many people here, and I want you to hold it up once I ask you this, how many people here have lost their parents in the last X number of years? Hold up your index finger if you would, and please leave it up if you would. And perfect, thank you. And then how many people have lost, again, by raising your index finger, a child, a spouse, or somebody in suicide? Okay, a few no. more. And lastly, how many have lost someone to alcohol, drugs, or pills? Index fingers up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, you can put them down. Thank you so much. If you looked around, if you're able to see all the people on there, the vast majority of people, I typically have when I do these talks in person, I have people stand up and 90% of the people are typically standing up. And the reason that I do this right at the outset is to make an impact on how gratitude can impact your life and change your life when you've dealt with tragedies and traumas and the like. And this whole idea of gratitude and the gratitude mindset can help for all those types of things and many others. And particularly, if you look at what we're going through right now with coronavirus, it's probably the most traumatic or traumatic thing that any of us have ever been through for the most part. So it helps there as well. I tell people gratitude helps you focus on your blessings and abundance. And one of my favorite lines is that gratitude turns what you have into enough. And so a lot of it starts with, let me actually just say that again, gratitude turns what you have into enough. That's so important because we have people all the time, they're, they're chasing their neighbors, the better house, better car, better this, more money, all that kind of thing. And it's like a cat chasing its tail. It's just, you're never gonna really get anywhere if you're constantly comparing yourself or trying to chase somebody else. But one more quick exercise. You could do this just sitting in your chair. You could stand up initially, but just take your right arm and put it up, raise it up as high as you can and start turning in a clockwise manner. Now, when I'm at schools, of course, I have to show the clock, no offense, Aaron, but I have to show the, the watch to people because they don't always know what clockwise is. Now, just start bringing it slowly down. Keep it going clockwise. Bring it down to your forehead, your eyes, your chin, your chest, and kind of down to your waist. And what direction is it going now? Now, I think all of you are muted, so I can't hear you, but it is now going counterclockwise. So how can that be? Well, the arm never really changes its direction. It's just how you look at it, above and below, positive or negative, right or left, up or down, positive or negative or what have you. So to me, it's sort of how you look at something. And that's what I tell people to start with before I even get into the advantages of gratitude. It sort of depends on how you look at something. And are you a person that sees the glass half full? If we had, I've got a glass of water here. Everybody's used that half full or half empty. But the circle exercise shows you, it just depends on your view. Years ago, I was running a race. I was running these, these 10 Ks, it was 6.2 miles. And I was running a race that went from Medina, not far from where I live here, where all the rich people live in Bellevue, across the floating bridge to Husky Stadium. And I got about halfway across the bridge and I realized that I was having a terrible race. There was just people, little kids were passing me, it was pouring down rain. And I looked in front of me and all these people were up over the hump that goes by those fountains they used to have. And I thought, gosh, I must be in last place. And then I turned around and looked behind me during the race, which is a little difficult to do to run and turn back at the same place. And I saw people all the way for the other end of the bridge, all the way up past where the old toll plaza used to be and into Medina where there were still tons of people. And it occurred to me as I'm running along, if like from where I'm standing, all these people in front of me weren't there, I would be in first place. If they had just decided not to come today, I would be actually in first place and I'd be leading the race. So it depends on how you look at something. So, so let's get started with grad. Take that piece of paper, if you will, and a pen. And here's what I want you to do, a little exercise. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to do this. And what I'd like you to do, I call this the UR card. Y-O-U-A-R-E, UR. And what I want you to do, I'll give you, as I said, 30 seconds. And I want you to think about putting yourself in the shoes of your mother, or maybe your biggest cheerleader you've had in your life. And I want you to get, give the five to 10, to as many things as you can list in 30 seconds to describe you. Your mom would say this, your biggest cheerleader would say, you are energetic, you are driven, you are talented. Whatever those things are, write as many as you can in 30 seconds, go.
Okay, and stop. And again, I don't have a lot of time to this. I'm going to try to jam in a number of things here to get my point across about gratitude. But as you wrote those things down, this is what your mom would say about you. This is what your biggest cheerleader would say about you. Hopefully, you all have the little reaction button down in the bottom. And what I'd like you to do is you slowly read down those things you just wrote. Maybe it was five things. Maybe it was three. Maybe it was ten. If you could give me a thumbs up on the reactions here on Zoom to after reading those, if you felt better about yourself after reading those five or ten qualities that you possess according to your mom or biggest cheerleader. So here's the little thumbs up. And if you have that, pop in a little thumbs up. And I'm just going to check this across here to see if that makes you feel a little more connected with yourself. I see Christy. I don't actually got to flip this over to gallery a second here and just to see a lot of thumbs up. And I'm telling this to you because that is what a gratitude mindset will do for you. A gratitude mindset gets you to focus on what you have versus what you don't have. And if you think about that, the most important relationship we're ever going to have is the one we have with ourselves. I'm going to talk about it in a little bit. Find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. But I want to start out by just thinking how that impacts you. If you look at all those qualities you possess, that biggest cheerleader said, that's going to make you feel better. Well, that's what looking at things from a gratitude perspective do, a gratitude mindset, as I call it, and a sp specifically a gratitude journal that is very, very important to get things written down on paper. I will never understand, I debated for a long time whether I should tell people my age. I just turned 70, seven zero. That's seven decades on this planet. I will never understand why I've always been so hard on myself, and I've never understood why people are so hard on themselves. And when you are calling names to yourself privately, when you're saying things to yourself you would never say to a friend, that's the problem. And when you get into gratitude and you're focusing on everything you have versus what you don't have, you don't have a tendency to do that as much. For years, I called myself a name I would never even say again anymore for the last 10 or 15 years but I will spell the word to you. And I used to call myself an L-O-S-E-R. And I never understood why I did that. Again, you'd say stuff to yourself, but you'd never say that type of thing to a friend. So it does depend on how you look at it. Now, there's 25 some odd people on this call today. I don't know a lot of you. I talk in a lot of big groups, up to 1,000. I once spoke to 10,000 soldiers down at Joint Base Lewis McCord. And there was tons of people there. So you don't know who you're going to get through to. But I'm just offering it as an example of something, if you look at something differently, how it can impact you. And the way this works, of course, is gratitude. So let's just think about coronavirus for a second. I had somebody come up to me at a talk recently and said, okay, Mr. Gratitude Guy, we're going through this coronavirus, this COVID-19. What is there to be grateful for? Tell me that. So I put together, I actually do a lot of videos, and I'll tell you how you can get my Monday morning minute before I wrap up here in, in a few minutes, in 20 minutes or so. But I started writing down all these things, and you got this technology. Look at this Zoom thing that we're doing. We've got FaceTime on our phones, we've got Zoom, we've got Skype, and we've got web meeting, and all these different ways, all this technology. Here we are, fortunate to be healthy. I've met a lot of people that haven't found one person that they know that actually had the virus, but we should be so grateful for that. All this extra time with our families, people are reconnecting, they're getting more time with their spouse. We're doing a lot of in-home in schooling, so people are, I know it's tough for some of the kids, but it also has connected families better, to get, uh, better together. Science today, they're going to have a vaccine before long. Who knows if they would have ever had a vaccine for the Spanish flu 100 years ago. Family dinner is making a big comeback, the whole social connection, this personal touch. I don't think we realize how important face-to-face -face was, and it feels like I'm not that far away from you folks. It feels like I'm only a few feet, and that's the magic of Zoom. You look at the efficiencies. I would go drive an hour and have a cup of coffee with a buddy of mine, have a coffee at Starbucks for an hour, and drive back home, spend three hours for a one-hour coffee, and now I've got one hour on Zoom, and it's efficient. I've saved a couple of hours. This, all this convenience, meals, food that's delivered to your doors and so forth. And then this whole idea of community. What is rotary? Service above self. It's all about connecting as a community. And you think of the strength that everybody is in this together nationally and certainly globally. And I think maybe the most of all, because I talk about gratitude, is that the thing that I think maybe at the top of this list is it realigns your priorities. When you go through something like this, you find out what's really important. And whether it's family or security or your home or saving money or whatever it might be, it's so incredibly important to, to realign the priorities. And I think this whole coronavirus thing has done just that. So I just believe so strongly it depends on how you look at something. I also think it takes as long as it takes. 
I started seven or eight years ago to become a speaker. I wanted to be a speaker when I was 19. It took me 45 years to get the guts to go out and do it and start talking to groups. I started with a lot of rotaries. I still do a lot of rotaries and chambers and lions and that type of thing. But it takes time and to never stop believing in what you are. So that's why I like to tell people how old I am. When I started seven or eight years ago at 62 or 63, it doesn't matter. Colonel Sanders started KFC at 63, Ray Kroc McDonald's 54, Mary Kay Ash 58. It just goes, JC Penny 56. It just goes on and on. So it doesn't matter how old you are, where you are in this continuum, but it makes such a difference. But I will tell you, if you're going to be a gratitude person and understand that you got to kind of clean out your brain. You got to get rid of the junk that can be in there and it can make a big difference in how you look at things. So what I want to talk about now is kind of the centerpiece of things that I talk about with gratitude is a gratitude journal. Now there's a, I have a gratitude journal and I tell people you can buy this. I'll tell you how to buy it later if you want, but you can also get a spiral notebook and you can get it and write in every single day. And there's a little sign or little note up here at the top of this gratitude journal. It says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. There's something about writing that makes such a difference in how it plants it in our brain. And in this case, what are we writing about? What we're grateful for. Here's my actual journal and I write in every single day. I got to set a great example, of course. And the way this is set up is that on this particular page right here, it says gratitude today and you have the day and the date. So you would write, of course, Thursday, May 14th. The date is or Thursday, May 14th, as I said. Then the daily number, I'll come back to that in a second because you guys are going to do a little exercise with that. Then there's a couple of lines called current events, special occasions. So you don't have to have a diary. You can have everything in your journal. Here's about six or seven lines. You write what you're grateful for. And then down in the lower left-hand corner, it says the highlight of your day. And I'll get to that in a second too. And then on the right-hand side, this is your gratitude tomorrow. I'll go into more detail on that on another talk. So what I want you to do right now is take that same piece of paper you wrote down, all those qualities that you had. Hopefully, you'll maybe save that. If you really, it's just a reminder of many qualities that you possess. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to first assign yourself a daily number. What is a daily number? The way I look at this is I, I rate it like this. 10 is the best day of your life, and one is maybe the worst day of your life. So I want you to assign a number to yourself right now. Nobody's going to see this. You're not going to share it with anybody, just kind of most of you are probably on your own in your house or condo or apartment or what have you. And I want you to rate, that's kind of going to take your temperature, if you will. So you can do halves. You can be seven and a half. You can be nine and a half. Somewhere between one and ten. Write that number down. Put a circle around it. And then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you another 30 seconds. And what I'd like you to do is write down as many things that you're grateful for as fast as you can in 30 seconds, hopefully in priority order, maybe the most important things that you're grateful for. If you can only pick one, only pick two and so forth, write as many things down in 30 seconds as you can you're grateful for. I'll give you 30 seconds, go. Okay, and stop. And again, I sometimes give more time, but I want to get a lot of things packed in here to in the 20 minutes if I can. So now, again, this is a very personal exercise, but I want you to, you just took the time to write these things down that you're grateful for. Hopefully you got five or 10 things somewhere in that neighborhood. And you wrote them all down, which takes a little bit more time, but I want you to reread them very briefly to yourself again, the, the five or 10 things that you wrote. And then, when you're done reading those things, I want you to write down another daily number after reading those five to 10 things. Could be the same number, it could have changed. But whatever it is after writing down that number, after reading those five to 10 things, write that number down at the bottom of your page and put a circle around it. Okay, and if you have your little thumbs up, as I mentioned on here, by a signal of thumbs up, how many people's number from the top 
to the bottom stayed the same, give me a thumbs up. One, two, three, four, looks like four, five. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And now, how many people with a signal of thumbs up did the number from the top to the bottom go up? Thumbs up if you would. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, looks like, yeah, excellent. Thank you. So what is that? That is a 30 second example of what a gratitude journal will do for you. If you can impact your mood to go from whatever number you are up to a higher number in 30 seconds, imagine what this takes five minutes every single day to write in. I have fraternity brothers that I keep in touch with. And this particular journal I'm, I sell is called the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. As I say, it takes five minutes. They name me the Brooker. So they would call me and say, I need a dose of the Brooker because I've always kind of been Mr. Motivation, Mr. Inspiration. And I'm really feeling, feeling bad having a tough day. And, you know, I used to just spend all this time talking to them and cheering them up and giving them some thoughts of motivation and things to be thankful for or whatever it might be. And then ever since I got into gratitude, now they call me and I go, um, have you written, like, I need a dose of the Brooker. And I go, have you written in your gratitude journal yet? And they go, no. Bam, I just hang up on them. I just hit the off button because you know, you need to write in your gratitude journal before you come to me. And so they call me back and they go, we got cut off. I was talking to you. I was, I was, I was trying to get some advice from you and we got cut off. I said, no, we didn't. I hung up on you. I said, write in the gratitude journal and call me back. You're going to see how you feel. So you could see for the seven or eight or nine people what it was out of 25 or so people. If it has that big of an impact, it can make such a big difference. So do me a favor. I love to pull my audience. Take down this number, 206-371-8309. 206-371-8309. And that is my cell slash text. Please text me what you're the most grateful for. It could be a word, it can be two words, but I'd love to kind of get a flavor and I will tell you, and not without giving it away, that sometimes Rotary people are even more grateful than I think some of the Chamber of Commerce people that I deal with, but it's just an individual thing. But I just like to get a kind of flavor of see what people are. 206-371-8309. And that way I can get kind of a, get an idea. Now I will tell you, as you're texting that, people ask me a lot, how fast can you change? And so, wait a minute, David, I haven't been really that grateful or I haven't focused on gratitude or I've been too much of a negative glass half empty person or whatever it might be. How fast can you change? Well, the science will tell you that's 30 days. It's 28 days to do a new habit. It just sort of depends. It's at least three or four weeks and there's all this. Well, I contend that's a great plan, but I contend you can change your behavior in an instant, literally an instant. And I'll give you a quick example. In my old career, one of the things I did before I decided to become that gratitude guy was I was running a Nordstrom store. But before I ran the store as a store manager, I was working my way up through the different positions. And at the time, I was managing the suit department. And I would wear, the course, the suit and have the little suitcase or a briefcase, rather. And I didn't say much to anybody. I just would go to the department, do my deal. And I was winning contests and just being Mr. Aggressive about it. One day, I'm in the lunchroom. And this guy comes over to me, he goes, are you Dave Brooke? You're the suit manager, aren't you? I said, yeah. And he goes, he was like a maintenance guy. And I said, uh, yeah, I'm Dave Brooke. And he goes, can I tell you something? I go, sure. I want to tell you what, what the reputation is that you have around the store here. I go, okay, what's that? And he goes, you think you're hot stuff. And what's really embarrassing about this meet, you don't talk to anybody. You just walk around, you got the suit, the starch, you know, the shiny shoes, you got your little briefcase, you go down and you win all the contests, we see you at the top of the list, but you don't talk to anybody because apparently you think you're cooler than everybody else. Well, needless to say, I was a little surprised, maybe didn't realize that, but more than anything, I stuck my hand out to him and I shook his hand. I said, Steve, I'll never forget his name. I said, Steve, thank you so much for having the guts to tell me that. Maybe that's just the thing and the advice or the comment that I needed. So I snapped my fingers, walked out of the lunchroom, and started talking and saying hi to every single employee I could possibly find. And I noticed in those stores where the escalators kind of do a crisscross, like an X, the escalators don't go any slower if you're saying hi to people that are coming down the other direction. And I knew every single person said hi, asked about their family, their kids, whatever, totally changed my reputation. How fast did I do it? Snapping my fingers. That's how fast you can do it.
but I will tell you that it sure helps to have a power assist like gratitude or a gratitude journal. And I'll give you just a real quick example of how this can affect you now that you kind of understand what, how I rate the daily number. When I was growing up, my mom would call me and she dealt with manic depressive is now called bipolar. And she would call me and she'd say to me, you better come over and see me in the next half hour or I'm gonna take all these pills. And she would shake the pills right by the speaker to the phone back in the old days when it was a handheld phone. And I didn't know what to do. So I'd go over there and see her and talk to her and try to make her feel better. Well, years later, she unfortunately died of cancer. My father committed suicide. My wife died. I had all sorts of things that happened to me. So I have a pretty good level of understanding what happens when you deal with trauma, which is why I feel so strongly about what gratitude can do for you because it's continually helping you to focus on what you have. And so in that case, I got some of that from her. And one day I woke up and, and as you see how I rated one to 10, I was a two, maybe even a one. And I thought, man, I was so depressed. I was, and I had a talk to do that day up at the Burlington Chamber of Commerce in Burlington, Washington. And so I thought, well, you better practice what you preach. So I went and went to Starbucks, got my gratitude journal, took the five or 10 minutes. It took a little longer that day, wrote in it, and it probably bumped me up to about a four or five. So I felt a little bit better. I go up to Burlington, I do the talk. Of course, unlike Zoom now, it's in person, and there was like 150, 200 people. It's a pretty good-sized chamber of commerce. And when I'm done, there's, I'm selling the books, and the people come up to the table, and this gal comes up to me, and she's crying. And she goes, I just want to tell you something. You just changed my life. And I had never heard that at, until that point, and I've heard it a lot, words to that effect since, which is very gratifying, but that's the first time I'd ever heard it. I said, well, can you tell me what it was? She goes, well, I, I, I can't go into it, but I will tell you that my two sons, I need three journals, one for my two sons and one for me. We've had some real tough times, and I think this could really help us to focus on what we're grateful for instead of feeling sorry for ourselves. She gave me a hug. I left. I walked out to my car. I got in my car to drive back to Seattle, and I realized it was like a nine and a half. So I woke up as a two, wrote in my gratitude journal, went to a four to a five, impacted a person's life and all those people up at the Burlington Chamber and helped somebody to see the way that this can help your mindset. And I'm a nine and a half and I didn't, I never was a person that smoked or drank, but I didn't do drugs. I didn't take a pill. I didn't have a beer. I didn't snort white powder. All these things that people do that are trying to figure out some sort of coping mechanisms because this life is kind of challenging sometimes. This is certainly a perfect example. But that's what a difference that that can kind of make. So I just, I tell people the same thing with those fraternity brothers is that, you know, give it a try and, and, this whole, even if it's not the gratitude journal, that little piece of paper you wrote down, those five or six things, things you were grateful for, the same thing about how your cheerleader would look at you, any of those things that keep you in line with the person in the mirror is so important. And I contend the most important relationship, certainly if you're religious and it's God or Jesus, your maker, I understand that too. That could be number one. But somewhere at the number one or number two spot, the most important relationship, I contend you'll ever have is with yourself. And I think if you find yourself and you get a good relationship and that gratitude journal and that gratitude mindset will help that, then you find out what you're passionate for, you're probably going to find your purpose. And I think most people, maybe not all, but I think most people at some point want to find their purpose. And I think it starts with that great relationship. And I will tell you, if you wonder about the relationship with yourself, Somebody, I heard this the other day with a stimulus check, and somebody said, did you get the stimulus check? And, and I said, no. And they went off on like for 20 minutes about how they hadn't gotten theirs and the problem and everything. And I went, wait a second. I thought you were asking me about my stimulus check. Why are you talking about yourself for 20 minutes? I said, no, I didn't get it. But people tend to be center focused sometimes. And so it's okay if you're building a positive relationship with yourself. But I just find it interesting how this affects our mind. I went down to Reno with a buddy of mine years ago, and we were doing the slot machines. This is in the days when the quarters would come down, come kind of, kind of crashing down and stuff. He puts a quarter and gets $1,000. So the quarters are just crashing down, and he's cheering, and he's going, Brooker, Brooker, I won $1,000. And I go, God, I can walk over his machine, and he's screaming and yelling, and he says, I'm buying dinner. And I went, God, that's great. And I just watched the quarters. He's keep coming down. And as I'm watching the quarters coming down, I'm thinking, you know, I'm really happy for him. I'd be just a teeny bit happier if it was me, though. 
because that would have been even more fun. I'm so, but you know what? It's being honest. And that's why if you have that great relationship with yourself and then you can find what you're passionate about, what are you passionate about? If you had a million dollars in your checking account every day, every single day, there was a new thing deposited in there. What would you do? If you had a hundred million dollars in your bank, you had all the money you could ever need. What would you do? Those are ways to figure out what you're passionate about. And I think at some point it leads to your purpose. And if you wonder about purpose with people, look at some of the examples like Bear Bryant won a bunch of championships at Alabama. He quits and 47 days later, he's dead. Joe Paterno has a big problem at Penn State and that sex scandal with those other people there. And he gets fired 72 days later, he's dead. Andy Rooney was on 60 Minutes for years, I think actually into his 90s. His last broadcast, within 30 days, he was dead. So it just shows that the, the passion, the purpose, and ultimately finding yourself and you'll get to that passion. Now, if I was in person with you, I would take this $20 bill and I would go out to each one of you and, and say, now, how many people, look at that right to the camera, how many people would take that $20 bill. Now, assuming that there's no connect, no catches, which there's not, I would say, nope, and most people would probably take it. So if I take this $20 bill with Andrew Jackson on it and I crumple it up like this, again, I'm not gonna make you go through the thumbs up, and I'm assuming if I smoothed it out, you'd still take it. And I smoothed it out here. If I put it on the ground and stomp on it and then smooth it out, how many would still take it? I'm guessing most everybody unless they thought there's some sort of catch, which there isn't. So if I look at Andrew Jackson and I say to him, you know, listen, Andrew Jackson, I think you're a piece of crap. I think you're worthless. I don't think you deserve to be on this planet. What Andrew Jackson would do is he'd look back at me and he'd go, well, Mr. Speaker Man, that's just fine. But you know what? You can think whatever you want. I'm still worth 20 bucks. And he would be right. So then how is it that you, like Andrew Jackson, let somebody crush you, somebody step on you, somebody tell you you're not worthy and let them get away with it and devalue you from 20 to 15 to 10 to $5 to the worst of all zero and get away with it? Well, I will tell you when it's happened, it's happened to me. I would submit that probably it's happened to most of you. The best way, one of the best ways to prevent that is to get a better connection with yourself. One of the best ways to do that is a gratitude journal. So let me mention a couple of things. People ask me a lot about, well, how do I get more gratitude in my life? And there's a couple of things. And if you have your cell phones handy again, if you'd like to do this every Monday morning, I send out a what's called the Monday Morning Minute. It's a one minute video on gratitude. A different subject, I've got over a thousand videos on YouTube. And I would say probably six or 700 of those are Monday morning minutes. So if you'd like to get it, take this down. Just text the name grat uh, excuse me, grateful to 42828. The number to punch it in is 42828. And you just punch in grateful in the subject line, send, and it'll come back and ask you for your email and you'll be signed up. So it's the word grateful to 42828. On this Gratitude Journal, you can get these at thatgratitudeguy.com. I'm always appreciative of people that buy my journals on the website, www.thatgratitudeguy.com. And there's actually a special now that you can get the journal for just shipping and handling. It's $15, but if you pay the $7.95, I'll send the Gratitude Journal for you for just the shipping cost. And the, the Monday Morning Minute, too, it's, it's interesting because... I come up with people, and again, Zoom is very different. This is the fifth virtual talk I've done since this started. So I've actually been pretty busy, which is really neat. It's certainly a different dynamic, to say the least. And in fact, it's funny. Every so often, something funny will happen. And you see people going like this. And you hear nothing. You hear nothing. There's like no sound. I'm in my den. It's just I hear nothing. It's just like so strange. It's like, okay, moving on to the next story. So afterwards, they come down to the journal, and the guy goes, is this your journal? And I go, yes, my personal one. I mean, of course, I write in my own journal. So he thumbs through it. I said, don't look too closely. It's kind of private. But he thumbs through it and he goes, wow, you're writing this every day. And I go, were you listening to the talk? 
Of course I write it in every day. No, I'm, I'm going to tell you, you should write every day. Me, I don't. I just go on odd days just when I feel like I want to be in a better mood. So make such a difference. So getting the Monday morning minute is one thing you could do. Buying the gratitude journal is another thing. Also, I do coaching and we just finished talking about the advantages of the Monday morning minute and the gratitude journal. So you write it and it's, just, it's on paper and it feels better. And I'm really fascinated by how much fun it is to serve people. What is Rotary? As I said earlier, service above self. And another way I serve people is through coaching. So I like to help people get to their passion and purpose. And I think if people agree with me, finding yourself, finding your passion, finding your purpose, I do that through coaching. And I offer people an opportunity to experience a 60 to 90 minute complimentary coaching session to see how gratitude can help them. So recently I had a young man that was having a difficult time and I coached him and gosh, he ended up buying a new house, getting the boot new job and a new girlfriend. So it was really, really neat. So if that's, if that is of interest to you, you can text me at David at that gratitude guy. So last thing I want to do, and that's David at that gratitude guy for the email is I want to talk about sharing gratitudes. Get your smartphones out again, if you would, please. And I think that when you understand this is trying to get packed into 20 or 25 minutes, embracing gratitude, takes as long as it takes, get a gratitude journal, find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. Well, now we're going to share gratitude. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds. I call this the four T's. I'd like you to take your cell phone and I want you to text, tweet, tell, or telephone. And most people are going to text. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds and I want you to text somebody in your life and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. And please use the word grateful. 30 seconds, go. Okay, and stop. And if you're somebody that text is slow, I go do senior centers and I give them about three minutes to do one text. And then I go to junior highs and they knocked out 10 texts in like 30 seconds. So they, they covered everybody. So hopefully you were able to get that text out. If not, please complete it when I'm done. And it's really fun. And again, Zoom is certainly different. But when I'm at the book table and people are coming up and they're talking, I ask them, what was your biggest takeaway from the talk and so forth? But they always want to talk about their text. So they show their phone. They go, look at that. Look at the answer I got. And it's the text they sent to somebody to tell them how grateful there was. And here's one that said, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? And I thought, wow, that's kind of different. That's not kind of the spirit. And then another one was, um, what was it? Oh, are you sure you sent this to the right person? And I'm thinking, Wow. Gosh, we're just trying to spread some gratitude here, for gosh sakes. I was in a uh, performing arts center in Bothell, and somebody was actually using their phone. And I could hear her. She was about 10 or 15 feet away. And so she's talking, and she's talking loudly. And I'm up on the stage. She's got the phone. She goes, I'm just so, she's following instructions. I'm just so grateful for you, and I just really appreciate you. I'm, I'm guessing it was her husband. And she goes, yes, and I just appreciate everything you do, and I'm just so grateful. And I, I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> no, it's your idea. It's not my idea. Don't take that away. So I will tell you, if I got through to one person today, that's one more person than yesterday. If I got through a higher number, that's absolutely fantastic. But when you find something you're passionate about, you want to share it. That's what that is by sending that text. That's the type of, type of thing I talk about when I get to go out and do these talks. I will tell you, in my experience, from the, all the death and destruction that I dealt with, it was quite a bit. I think it transformed my life. I think understanding gratitude and having that as a mindset in many cases saved my life and it can save yours too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh. Great, great presentation. I'd, I'd like to open it up if anyone has some questions for David. Interesting, Christy. I never get a lot of questions, but I tell people, give gratitude to try. Try, and they say, what's, the, what is, what's even one thing? And I say, then just try writing something, one thing down every day or two or three things down before you go to bed. But it's, uh, 
it, it's fun because when I when we are in person and we talk, people will say things to me in person they won't say in front of a group, and they'll talk about some experiences and things. And that's why I've kind of learned that uh, there's not in, it's generally as many questions as I tell them. Just give it a try, and it's it's so it's such a powerful mindset. And gosh, in it, just in general, but particularly in a time like this. Well, thank you so much. You've given us so much to think about, and I'm glad that you encouraged us to take notes. And um, I'm actually going to go home, and I'm going to put a big whiteboard up on the fridge, Excellent. and have everybody participate in this. And I'm, my uh, granddaughter is going to enter middle school next year, and I'm thinking this would be a great daily activity for her to just try to find the good in some of those challenging days. And you know, and it's interesting, Christy. You're the president, correct? Yes. Uh, and I think about anybody who's a leader, whether it's a president or store manager that I used to do or any of these things, you got to set a great example. I still think raising kids and managing people require the same basic skill and that's setting a good example. So thank you for setting such a good example with a whiteboard and going out <laughs> doing that right away. That makes me, that's right. worth the price. Well, thanks. Good things to think about. Yes, Scott. Yes, uh, I have a question for uh, Chuck Craning. What color sweaters uh, David wearing? Navy blue. Oh, it looked purple to me. <laughs> it's purple. It's purple. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome, Christy. Thank you for inviting me. Now, at this time, I'm going to open it up for community and rotary announcements. But before we start that, as you know, one of the highlights.